it seems like every day, every day of life, you know, we're faced with something. You know, uh, if it's not challenges that in our own personal life that we have to deal with, you know, there's still things that probably rise up, you know, that we're having to trust the Lord for uh, in our everyday lives, you know, to, to crucify the flesh or to deal with this or to deal with that. Uh, maybe every now and then maybe an attitude that pops up. Uh, I know we're, we're, all not, we're not perfect by no means. And uh, <laughs> we're striving, but we're striving, amen. We're striving to be more Christ-like every day. Uh, but in the process of striving to be Christ-like, there are obstacles that comes up, amen. There are things that we have to deal with in life. And uh, some of the things are our own doing, but uh, sometimes there's a lot of things out there that we deal with that somebody else puts upon us, amen. Right. <laughs> just today, just living, you know, in the world today and facing, you know, people today is a challenge sometimes, amen. And, uh, and I know you, you all see it too. It just seems like it uh, becomes more and more of a challenge. It seems like the closer our walk is with Christ, uh, it seems like the more the challenges are presented to us. Amen. The more the enemy wants to fight us, the more the enemy wants to throw things in front of us that we have to overcome and all. But uh, I thank God for his grace. Amen. And I thank God for his hand, his love, for his mercy. Uh, that he sees us through uh, every situation and obstacle that comes before us. Amen. Amen. That we can have victory. Amen. So uh, tonight is going to uh, be a little different. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, sometimes it's hard for me to teach. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I, I just, uh, it's hard to follow notes. I'm not the best person in the world when it comes to following notes. I just kind of like to get out there and just run with it, you know. So tonight I'm going to try to follow some notes. Okay. <laughs> so it, it may be painful for some of us, but just bear through it. And if you're there, just pray that God give us victory through this. <laughs> Amen. Um, one of the things is that, uh, that we learn as, uh, as our journey of victory is that we learn to, to voluntarily submit uh, to every change God wants to make in our life and the humble uh, humbly ask him to remove all the character defects. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and we all have them. <laughs> if we don't think we have character defects, then we probably need to go back to the altar. Amen. Because, uh, you know, I, I know every day, you know, I'm kind of like, wow, man, I think I should have handled that a little bit differently. <laughs> I, every day, like, God, I think I should have said that a little bit differently. Or, God, maybe I should have had a little bit better attitude. You know, so... Uh, Voluntarily submitting ourselves to God, you know, and saying, God, you know, I need your help. You know, without God, we're not able to do anything. That's right. Nothing, you know, nothing. Nothing in life are we able to be victorious over if, if it's not, wasn't for the hand of God. So uh, there's no way that you can have victory in your life without having a relationship with God, okay? okay? And you're just not going to have it. You know, you, you may go through life, you may think that you're victorious, you may think you're an overcomer. Uh, but you don't really know what victory is until you've established that relationship with God. So first of all, we have to voluntarily submit ourselves to God and say, God, here I am. I just turn myself over to you. I give every part of me to you. I hold back nothing that God can take, you know, what he has there, and God can begin to perform the work in us that he chooses and desires to perform in us. We're, we're constantly improving. We have never arrived at what God really wants us to be. Amen? So if we was, we'd be perfect. You know? And, and I, I, I can tell you tonight, I'm far from being perfect. Amen? I'm far from that. And uh, if we were all probably honest with ourselves tonight, we would probably agree with the same thing. That we still got some of God still working on me. I remember that little song as a child growing up. He's still working on me <laughs> to make me what I ought to be. So, uh, uh, it don't matter how young you are or how old you are, God is still working on each of us, okay? So learning to submit ourselves is, uh, is the, first, uh, the first step is to, uh, to, to volunteerly give ourselves to God and let God, God take us and use us. It says, happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires, to do what God requires. Uh, it says... Uh, we were entirely ready to have God remove all of our defects and character. It says in James 4 and 10, it says to humble, to humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. 
One of the biggest things is learning to be humble. And I'm going to tell you, that's not always easy. Have, have you found that to be real easy? <laughs> you know, to humble yourself? Uh, with all the challenges and all the faces us out there, with all the opportunities we have, sometimes it's not easy to be humble. But we, we can't do that in our own strength. You know, it's impossible for us to do that. That's why everything that we do in our Christian walk with God, you know, is focused and depends upon trusting and believing God for the help. Yeah. You know, we can't do anything in ourselves. Right. All the things that we do in ourselves are going to be failures. Right. But all that we do in Christ Jesus is going to be successful. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we're not going to stumble. Doesn't mean that we're not going to falter. Doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes. But the thing is, if we're walking in Christ and we humble ourselves before Him, and if we volunteer ourselves before Him and give ourselves to Him, then God can take us and use us, and He can begin to form and mold us into what we need to be. Because the ultimate goal is for us to have victory over every circumstance in life that we face. Amen? To have victory. It doesn't, mean what, doesn't matter what the trial is, what the circumstance is in life, but to learn to have victory in the end, and that's where our ultimate goal is, to have victory, but only through Jesus Christ. In 1 John uh, 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Uh, and I know this, this lesson may, may seem a little uh, 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 elementary, I guess, to some of us, because we've been serving the Lord for so long. But sometimes, you know, it's good to go back and just to remind ourselves. And maybe it's for someone on Facebook, you know, tonight. Right. You know, uh, and also, sometimes just a simple message is, is good for us to remind ourselves yes. of where we started yes. and how we got to where we are today. And we know, it says, it says we, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we have to volunteer and submit ourselves to God. We have to humble ourselves for God. We have to confess our sins for God for, to God. But if we don't confess our confess our sins to God, then God can't forgive us of our sins, and we can't have victory over our sins. Right. Amen. We'll just continue to carry those sins along with us throughout life. You know, and we'll never accomplish or be what God has intended for us to be until we come to the, the realization that we all have sinned and all come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. You know. So we have to confess our sins to God, commit to God that we uh, that we need Him, and humble ourselves before God. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, it's a humbling experience to be humble. <laughs> it's a humbling experience to be humble. You know, sometimes God has to go, you know, out of the way to humble us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know that there's a time in my life when, you know, when uh, I thought I knew it all. <laughs> Have you ever been there? <laughs> <laughs> if you had me and Peggy had, <laughs> we, we rode that train a little bit. <laughs> I rode the wheels off of it for a while, you know. <laughs> yeah, when I was younger, you know, I just I just thought I knew it all. I mean, nobody could tell me anything. I had the world figured out, you know, and uh, it was a humbling experience when I finally realized that I didn't know nothing. Amen. Uh, my dad always said, I know I said this before, but dad always told me, he said, son, you got to live a lifetime to figure out what life is all about, you know. And I never really understood that, you know, at that time. But now that I'm a little older, you know, uh, I can look back and I know exactly what he was saying. You know, you got to live a lifetime to really figure out what life is all about, you know. And the, the sooner that we uh, submit ourselves to God and the sooner we turn our life over to God, and all, then the faster, you know, we mature in the Lord and the faster we realize that, you know, hey, we don't really know near as much as we thought we knew. You know, I, uh, I, I read something, and I know a lot of people is probably not a big fan, you know, of, of some people and all, but, uh, and I read an article, well, I didn't read it, I actually watched the video. I watched the video, and uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was being him. And, uh, and, 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 and it shocked me to hear what he said. Because on this video, Benny Hinn, he, you know, he, he, he confessed that for years and years and years in his life, you know, he had preached, you know, you send me a thousand dollars and God's going to do this and God's going to do that. But he just recently came out on a video and said that he was in error for all those years. For all of those years, he was in error. You know, so for him, the man as well as, you know, well known as him, 
to get out and publicly confess, you know, that he had been preaching and teaching things that was not, you know, according to the Word of God. And that just shocked me to hear him say that, you know. Uh, but he did. He publicly come out and confessed that for all these years, you know, God opened his eyes and he saw that for all these years that his prosperity preaching and everything that's going on is not of God. You know, so that, you know, for him to be able to do that had to be a very humbling experience. Yes, right. Because we all know he is well known in the world today. Uh, he's made millions and millions and millions of dollars off of that 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 gospel that he was preaching, you know, and uh, for him to come down in life and say that, you know, he realizes that he was in error all these years he was doing that, and that he would no longer be a part of that, never again would he ever tell anyone, you know, to send them money, God's going to do this, God's going to do that, he said, I'll never do it again, you know, so, so to me, that was a humbling experience for him to do that, you know. Uh, to publicly come out, you know, well known as, as, as well known as he is, and all, to be publicly confessed that no. So uh, something had to happen, you know, uh, in his relationship with God. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Paul. You know, uh, with Saul before he became Paul. You know, going around persecuting Christians and killing Christians and things like that. You know, and all and thought what he was doing was correct. You know, the one day what happened? He really met the master. And that's where everything changes. You know, we may think we know the master. We may think we have a relationship with the master. But when we really, really, really get to the point that we have a true relationship with him, then everything in our life begins to change. And we begin to see things more clearly than we ever had before. So I'm not saying that many him, you know, whatever, but, that, but apparently, you know, he had some kind of encounter, you know, that opened his eyes. You know, he see that what he was doing for all these years, you know, was false teaching and all. Now, he's going to have a lot of people that's going to disown him. You know what I'm saying? He's going to disown him. He knows that. You know, he knows. He knows. You know, he said, I don't care. I don't care what people think of me anymore. He said, you know, I, my eyes have been opened. I saw where I error, and I'm going to do what's right now. You know? And uh, so, but anyhow, but because of that, it's why, you know, you get victory. You know, when we come to realization and God shows us our errors in life, you know, and then we make the choice to do what's right, then that's when we begin to get true victory, okay? So, uh, so in, in my eyes, you know, uh, all the things he's done and everything, you know, he's just now really, in my eyes, getting true victory, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's between him and God and everybody else that pays money to him, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure, I don't know how that's going to affect multitudes and multitudes of people out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Somehow or another, it's going to affect those people who were called up in that. You know what I'm saying? But we just need to pray for them and yeah. pray for him, yeah. you know, that he'll stay on that true path. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of people may condemn him or whatever for everything he's done in the past, but, you know, if he's sincere in his heart and really makes things right now and he moves on with God, yeah. you know, then we have to have forgiveness in our heart you know, and right. accept him and pray right. for him that yeah. he will continue. Because there's no telling what he might be able to do now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's between, that's, that's between God. That ain't my business. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not my business. But I'm just saying, you know, to humble ourselves. And it's not easy sometimes to humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've ever been in a situation, you know, you know, you know, sometimes admit you're wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, it's admit, for some people it's extremely hard to admit they're wrong. You know, other people's not quite as hard, you know, but to have that humbling experience. So, but we must have that in our life to walk in victory, okay? We've got to have that in our life to walk in victory. Because if we don't, then we'll never experience what true victory is in Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> so we must submit every, we must submit every change God wants uh, me to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove all of my shortcomings. All the defects, all the things in my life, you know, that are not like him. All the things in my life that aren't Christ-like. You know, we must every day, we must ask him, you know, to continue to remove those. The Bible says that we are to make an offering of our very selves to God. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, Offer yourself as a living, offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. Let God transform you inwardly 
by a complete change of your mind. Yes. A complete change of your mind. Do we know that everything that starts, starts in our mind? Mm -hmm. It starts in our mind. You know, the mind is the most uh, enormous battlefield that we all face. You know, uh, it all starts up here, right up here in this little spot up here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what we have to do is we have to get to the point where we're allowing God to transform our way of thinking. Right. Our way of thinking. And the only way we can do that is to have that relationship with Him. Now, we can't go through life just doing everything and anything we want to do and thinking God is going to transform our mind. Amen? God will transform our mind when we draw close to Him. The Bible says if we draw close to Him, that He'll draw close to us. If we draw nigh into Him, that He'll draw nigh into us. So if we draw nigh into Him, then we're opening ourselves up to God to allow God to begin to transform our mind. Why? Because we're leaving... The carnality the way of thinking, we're leaving the fleshly way of thinking, and we're entering into the realm of the spiritual realm that where God can begin to transform our mind because our mind is a battleground. It's a battle between good and evil. It's a battle between the flesh and the spirit. So in order for us to be able to overcome the things in our life, which I'm going to say tonight as the fleshly things in our life, then we have to have a transformation into the spirit. Okay, the Spirit of God. Now, there's two spirits, the Spirit of Satan and the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. and, and whether we like it or not, and whether we like, whether we like to hear it or not, we're controlled by one or the other. Okay? <laughs> there's not a third one. There's not an in-between. It's either we're controlled by the Spirit of Satan or we're controlled by the Spirit of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. So inside our mind, we're having that, that battle that's going on. So what we want God to do is to take into a transformation of our thinking, of our mind. And take us from the thinking of the fleshly side or the carnality side and transform us over into the spiritual side of what God wants us to be. And that only comes by surrendering ourselves to Him, volunteering, submitting ourselves to Him, humbling ourselves to Him, yes. and being everything that God wants us to be. By reading His Word, by praying, yes. by seeking Him. Amen. We're going to be, and you've heard me say this so many times, we're going to be the strongest at what we apply ourselves to. Okay? That's why you see people who are bodybuilders, you know, and all. They got these bulls, these muscles. I mean, they can't even walk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they are nothing but muscle and all. It's because why? They have applied so much of their time. You know, they may work out seven or eight hours a day in the gym. They may do that every day. You know what I'm saying? But they, what they do, they have developed, you know, those yeah. muscles. You know, the Bible says that bodily exercise profits little. Yeah. Bodily exercise profits little. Bodily exercise doesn't do anything for your spirit. No. Amen? It doesn't. Now, it may build these muscles up, make, make you look like an incredible hulk or something <laughs> else, but it does nothing for your spirit. So the way that we have to exercise our spirit is we exercise our spirit through reading God's Word, being involved in the things yeah. of God. You know, transforming ourselves from the things of this world, but transforming ourselves into the things of God. And that's when we begin to spiritually think. And we no longer begin to, to think carnally. Yeah. You know, Paul said that we are to crucify the flesh daily, uh -huh. every day of our life. It doesn't matter how long we've been serving God. And sometimes that's when people, you know, begin to, to slip and slide is, you know, they've been serving God and they think that, you know, everything's good and, and everything's great and all. But Paul said, crucify it daily. Because the flesh, the fleshly man is constantly battling at you whether you even know it or not. Oh, yes. He's constantly, the old man, the one that you crucified a long time ago, that old man is just lingering somewhere back there in the corner. You know, he is waiting back there in the closet somewhere and got a crack in the door, peeking out, you know, waiting for an opportunity that he can jump back out there. You know, he's always you know, waiting for an opportunity that he can come in. The way that we keep the old man at bay and keep the old man from getting back in is through continuing our, our work with the Lord, continue praying, continue seeking God, continue reading the Word. And I know we hear that so much that we're just become deaf to a lot of people here. All, all I hear is you talk about you need to read your Bible. All I hear you talk about is you need to pray. All I need to hear you talk about is you need to go to church. All I hear you talk about is you need to be involved in the things of God. Yes, there's a reason for that. Because if we want to be spiritually strong, 
If we want to be spiritually drunk, if we want to live a victorious life in Jesus Christ, then it's what it's going to take. Amen? Because if we don't, if we're just kind of being half-heartedly, you know, not really submitting ourselves totally to God, you know, we're kind of dabbling out here in the world, and, and, and when it's convenient to serve God, then we go and serve God. It's kind of like we want to put God on a shelf somewhere, and when things are bad and things aren't going good in life, we want to go pull him off the shelf and say, God, I need you now. Right. You know, that's kind of like a credit card you may have hid away, you know, and you say, well, I'm going to go use that credit card and bring it out because, you know, I need it now, and go put it back up. Well, God's not that way. God wants to be with us every single day. God is longs. He desires to fellowship with us. I mean, he lingers to be our partner every single day. I mean, he, he wants to be next to us. He wants to talk to us. He wants to walk with us. You know, he wants us to help us to overcome the fleshly things in life that we can be spiritually strong, okay? But we have to do something. We have to submit ourselves to God and enable him to do that. God's not going to force us to do it. When God created us, he created us with a free will. That means he didn't create robots. You know what I'm saying? He didn't create puppets. What he did was he created human beings that had a mind that could think for themselves. You know, they can make good decisions. You know, and, all. and God tells us in his word, he tells us all the promises that he promised us if we will serve him, if we'll be faithful to him. You know, and our life will be long life, you know, if we will serve and be faithful to him. And all. So God has he's laid down the guidelines for us to have a victorious life. But that victorious life was never meant to have a victorious life in this world. But it was to have a victorious life in serving him. Why does he want us to have a victorious life? He wants us to have a victorious life because there are souls that are waiting in the balances out there who need to hear about Jesus Christ. And when we have a victorious life, then we're able, then, then, then we're uplifted, we're encouraged, we're enthused, we're excited. And as pastors say, we're just ridiculously, you know, in love with Christ. You know what I'm so, so, and when that begins to flow in us, and the only way that can flow in us is to have a relationship of who God is. And that begins to bubble over, and that begins to flow over, and that begins to, when you're around people, they look at you and say, there's just something different about you. You know, something different about you. You know, you're all bubbly. You're, you're joyful. You know, you just, you know, it seems like nothing just bothers you. You know, you're just excited. And you take that and you say, because I know Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. He's my strength. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's everything I have need of. You know, but we got to have that relationship with God in order to be able to have that joyful and bubbling over and overflowing to reach the lost. Amen. See, we have, we're living in a world today where there's a lot of people who are hurting. And I don't need to tell you that. I mean, you probably see them at work, you see them at school, you see them everywhere you go. You know, there's people who are hurting. You know, they're seeking for something. You know, they're thirsty, they're hungry for something. You know, and that something needs to be a relationship with God. Because the same peace that we as Christians should have in our life is the same peace that they need to have. But in order for us to be able to show them that peace, and let that show on our outside, not in the way that we dress, as much, but in the actions, of, you know, the way that we present ourselves, the way that we overcome the obstacles in life. You know, when they see that, that encourages them, you know, and that causes them to desire, you know, to change something in their life. And they'll say, how do you do it? And you say, let me tell you about it. You know, it's a dedicated life to God. You know, a dedicated life to God. So many people want to have one foot in the world and one foot with God. It's kind of like straddling the fence. It's kind of like being lukewarm. You know, you can't be that. God said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You know, he said to us today, let, you know, make your decision today who you're going to serve. You're going to serve me or you're going to serve the world. And God said, if you'll serve me, then I'll give you all these promises. You know, I'll be there with you in the times of your need. When you're going through the battles, when you're going through the struggles, when, you know, when, when everything around you is, he seems to be caving in, he says, I'll be there with you. He says, I'll make a way when there seems to be no way. So the exciting thing about that is, if we'll be faithful to God, God will be faithful to us. Amen? Amen. And God wants it. He wants to bless us. He wants us, you know, and when I'm talking about blessing, you know, I'm not... Now, yes, he wants us to have the things that we have need of in the world today, but he wants us to have the most spiritual blessing that we possibly can have because that is what's going to draw people to Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Bible says if we lift up Christ, all men shall be drawn yes. unto him. You know, so we've got to be able to maintain.
be able to maintain that relationship we have. We've got to get to the point where we, we walk in victory. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I mean, it's exciting. Amen. You know, and, and that same exciting that, that we're feeling here to, tonight, you know, uh, you know, that's what we need to flow over into other people. Amen. We come in contact. Now, I, I'm not naive. I know we all go through battles. I mean, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I hate to admit it. But if I wasn't teaching, I don't know if I'd come tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was feeling, I was just feeling so nauseated, so sick. I don't feel it now. But I felt so nauseated and so sick and just so tired when I got off work. You know, I sat down on the couch and I just, you know, it's like, man, what's going on here? You know, and I, I, I don't know, maybe they ever didn't want me to come. <laughs> you know, but I had an obligation. As a pastor right. said, you're on the hook. Right. <laughs> you're on the hook. You got to go. You know? <laughs> so, I, well, I didn't, I didn't tell him what time. You know what I'm saying? I talked about it later when I got here. And he said, yeah, you're on the hook, wasn't you? <laughs> we need to get on the hook for Jesus. All right. Right. <laughs> All right. You know, but, yeah, if I had done what my flesh wanted to do, I wouldn't be here tonight. Right. I mean, I'm being honest right. with you. You know, but now I push through. You know, I feel a whole lot better. You know, I don't have that sickness in my stomach, you know, and that nausea in my stomach. And, and like I would just want to sit down on that chair and fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? But that's the way I felt before I got here. And even after I got here, before everybody else got here, I was still thinking about, I'm going to lay down back there before everybody gets here and say, get a nap. <laughs> but I didn't do it. Amen. But thank God for victory. Amen. Because God gave me victory over that, you know. And I am so thankful. So anyhow, we we got to have victory in our life. Because without victory, we're no good to anybody else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, uh, you know as well as I do. You know, I, I hate to be in a crowd of people where there is always murmuring and complaining. Right. <laughs> like the world. You know, have nothing good to say, you know. I like to be around positive people. Right. You know what? I like to be like around people who are encouraging, who's uplifting. Right. But I understand that we're living in a world today where that's not always possible. Yeah, do I expect it more out of Christians? I do. You know, I do. I expect it more out of Christians. Does God expect it more out of Christians? Yes, I do. Because, you know, when, if we can't push through, then what kind of example are we telling people, you know, about our Lord and Savior who we, who we serve? You know, he's, is he not able to revive us? Is he not able to strengthen us? And that's what God did to me, you know, when I got here. You know, he strengthened me. He revived me. You know, he gave me the energy, you know, stand up here and be excited with you. <laughs> and, and I really feel excited. And ain't something I'm putting on, you know. <laughs> God rejuvenated me. Thank God for that. Through his spirit. Amen. I didn't have to go out and get something to drink. You know. <laughs> you know a worldly drink, you know. No, I didn't have to do that. No, I drank from the fountain of the heavenly father. You know. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so here we are. But, you know, uh, it kind of reminds me of when... Uh, uh, you know, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, you know, and it was all out there, and, you know, and, and they all complaining and everything, and, and, and God was going to strike them dead. <laughs> all the mumbling and complaining, you know, but God didn't do it. What if God had done that? You know, what kind of God would he have been, you know, to bring them out there and let them die? But he didn't. He brought them out there, you know, and he took care of them. He provided for them in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the wilderness, you know. So, Sometimes in our walk with God, we have a wilderness experience. You know, we're walking in the wilderness. But in that wilderness, what we've got to keep in our mind is knowing that God, you know, can send the fire. Yes. You know, pillar of fire. He can put a cloud by the day. You know, whatever we have need of. You know, he can uh, speak to a rock, you know, and, and, and quench our thirst. Yes. So whatever we have need of, we know that even though we're in the midst of the wilderness, that we have a God who loves us and he wants us to be victorious. <coughs> Amen. But we have to maintain our relationship with him. Now, the Israelites, there was those who mumbled and plain and, and kept on, and, and eventually God cursed them out, you know. And he said, okay, y'all want to keep on doing that? I'll just uh, raise me up a new generation, and <laughs> we'll go on with this thing, you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be replaced. I don't know about you. I have a work to do for the Lord in these last days, amen? And we got to do it through being victorious. And the only way we can be victorious is trusting in the victor. Jesus Christ, He is our source. He is our strength. He is the one that allows us to be victorious. Amen. Praise to God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the most decision of our life uh, by choosing to turn our life over to... The most, the most important decision of our life was choosing to turn our life over to God. 
That decision got you right with God. You accepted and determined to follow His Son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> the first step to any victory is to recognize who the enemy is. Okay? Now, the enemy's not your brother and sister in Christ. <laughs> in case you're wondering, <laughs> your enemy's not that and sitting beside you. Sometimes it may feel like it. <laughs> Sometimes you may feel like that that's your enemy, but that's really not the enemy. You know, the enemy may be using that person <laughs> at that moment. You know what I'm saying? But the enemy is really Satan himself. Amen. He is. He is. He is the enemy. You know, and um, I always said this, and I believe this is true. You know, when you look at a, a lost person out there, and uh, they're living the most uh, crazy, ridiculous, sinful life, uh, you know, uh, us as Christians, we, we need to have compassion on them because what we need to look at is we don't need to see that individual. You know what I'm saying? As they are, we need to understand that the enemy that makes them who they are. Amen? Because the only difference between a saint and sinner is whether they got Jesus or not. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. You know, if it wasn't for us here today, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ today, you know, in our lives, yeah. what would we be? Yeah. I know, I tell you what, I, I, I've been there. I experienced it. You know what I'm saying? I lived that life. Right. I lived that life without Jesus Christ. I lived that life when probably people looked at me and said, look at that heathen out there. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> he ain't worth a hoot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? And... So, uh, so, you know, the only difference between a saint and sinner is a sinner needs to have Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so that's why it's so, so important, you know, that we have compassion. I'm not saying that we can condone the sins they live in. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? But we should have enough love for that individual. Because let me tell you something. You know, we're going to spend eternity somewhere. It's going to be heaven or hell. Right. It's one or the other. I hate people that are on Facebook. It's either heaven or hell. <laughs> it's no other place. It's either heaven and hell. You know, so when we look out there and we see the people who are just, uh, you know, who, who, who just seem like they have no clue in life, you know, and all, and they're just doing everything wrong or opposite of what God wants them to do, we need to pray for them. You know why? You know why we need to pray for them? Because if they don't find Jesus Christ, guess what? They're going to they're, they're gonna spend eternity in hell. Amen? So, you know, we need to have a little compassion. You know, Jesus was, uh, was all about compassion. You know what I'm saying? Now, he didn't condemn, he didn't condone, I mean, he didn't condone, you know, a lot of things that people did, but he was all about compassion. Right. Even those who followed him and all, you know, he was concerned about whether they were going to eat or not. Uh, he, he, he took care of them. So us as individuals, uh, as we walk in victory through Jesus Christ, you know, it helps us to have compassion on the lost. Amen? To pray for them. Not to turn our nose up at them, you know, and, 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 and put them down or anything like that. You know, it's for us to pray for them. Because they're going to spend eternity somewhere. You know, it's either going to be in heaven or hell. If they don't spend it in heaven, unfortunately, they're going to spend it in hell. So, you know, we can to have compassion on them. I don't. I, I, I know I would never want to see one of my children or think that one of my children would ever die and go to hell. And if I was to ask every one of you here, I'm sure nobody in here would say, you know, you want your child to go to hell. You know what I'm saying? So that lost person out there is somebody's child. That lost person out there is somebody's mother. The lost person out there is somebody's father. Amen. Or uh, whatever, grandmother, grandparent, or we can go on and on. You know what I'm saying? So you know, uh, when the Bible speaks about you know that we're we're to have, uh, you know, we talk about and says that Jesus said, "How can you say you have loved love him whom you have not seen if you can't even love those that you have seen?" You know what I'm saying? So now, is that easy? No, it's not easy. Now, I'll tell you right now, it's not easy to love. Uh, you know, love people out there who are seeming to be unlovable. But Jesus Christ did it for us. He did it for us. I mean, there was a time in my life that I was unlovable. You know what I'm saying about some people? Mama probably loved me. <laughs> my, my mama probably loved me, you know. But, uh, you know, Jesus loved me. You know, but at that time I didn't know he loved me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it took me to have a relationship with him to understand, you know, his love for me and how much he loved me to know that he died on the cross for me. And he died on the cross for every sinner out there. Even before we were even born, he knew it. Yeah. You know, he died on the cross for us who are alive and those who are yet to come. You yeah. know, he died on the cross for the, the saint and the sinner alike. Doesn't matter. You know, uh, of course, it's his desire for, for everyone to come to the knowledge and accept him as Lord and Savior. So, you know, that's another reason why we must walk in victory. You know, we can have that compassion and that love even for the sinner. 
and, and, and I offer the first commission, it's not always easy to do that. Okay? So, anyhow. Uh, <coughs> Uh, one of the things we have to do is, uh, is we have to identify what character defect uh, that, that we need to work on in our life. And I'm sure, sure today, and I'm not going to ask to raise a hand, but I'm sure today if I was asked you what is it in your life that you need, still need God to work on, you know, what area in your life that you need God to work on, is it an attitude, is it temper, uh, is it whatever. You know, what is, what is it? What is it in your life that you have yet to conquer in your life and, uh, and that you need God to help you with? I'm sure everybody in here has something. You know, I, I know what my faults are. <laughs> do, do you know what your faults are? Yes. You know, uh, do we want to admit where our faults are? The first thing is to admit, no, we don't want to admit it to ourselves, you know what I'm saying? But guess what? There is one we do have to admit them to. Right. Oh, we already know them. He already knows them, you know. He's not sitting there kind of, kind of clueless and saying, okay, tell me what your faults are again. I don't know what they are. <laughs> if you're telling me what they are, I'll help you with them. <laughs> no, he sits there and says, hey, I know everything about you. I know the hair on your head. I know everything about you. I'm just waiting for you to confess your faults and bring them to me and turn them over to me and let me take care of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because until we do that, then we can't become victorious. And again, I'm going to emphasize this. If we can't come victorious, then we can't become what God really wants us to be. Right. We've got to live a life of victory in order to truly be what God wants us to be. To be able to walk through this land. You know, we got a lot of demons out there that need to be slayed. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of demons out there. Uh, and I don't mean that in a, in, in a scary way or a, or a Halloweenish way or whatever. You know. <laughs> but there's a lot of demons out there uh, that, that have people bound. And, all. and sometimes people don't even know they are bound. You know. yeah. So, uh, you know, we gotta, we got to be able to walk in victory so that we, we, we can be an example of life to those. Uh, <coughs> it says, falling down doesn't make you a failure. How many knows that? Mm -hmm. Falling down does not make you a failure. Okay. Falling, a lot of people have fell down. Yeah. Some of the greatest men in the world that are successful fell down. Mm -hmm. But what makes you a failure if you don't get back up? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fall down. It's okay, uh, you know, but the thing is that we have to get back up. And we realize, you know, the reason we fail is because of our weaknesses. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that's when we realize that we, we really need God. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because in our weaknesses, you know, uh, He is made strong. In our weaknesses, God is made strong. So in our weaknesses, when we fail, we get back up and we say, God, you know, hey, I uh, made a mistake. I said something I shouldn't say, you know, I did something I shouldn't do, uh, I had a thought that I shouldn't have had, uh, you know, uh, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, and you say, God, you know, hey, forgive me, and, uh, and you dust yourself off, and you get back up, and you continue on your journey, amen, you know, uh, you just don't sit there and water in it, don't let the devil use it to just try to defeat you, uh, one of the biggest things that the devil does to Christians sometimes is, uh, I, I knew this, this young lady one time that um, she she, she strives to have such a walk, well, actually, I mean, a couple of people, they strive to have, have such a walk with God that they were miserable with their relationship with God. They tried to be perfect, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the least little bad thought they had, the least little thing, and it just crushed them. It just like it destroyed them. You know, they were trying to, to, to live a life that was impossible to live. And in doing that, you know, then they, their life, their relationship with God was totally miserable. They couldn't enjoy their salvation, you know, because they didn't understand, you know, that they're not perfect, you know. They couldn't understand that sometimes you may snap at somebody, you know, uh, and, and not really say something in a tone of voice that you would like to set it in, but you said it in a different tone of voice. Or, or had a thought in your mind that just came for a split second, you know, and you had to, you know, to, to get away from it. They thought that if those things happened, that they were going to die and go to hell. They did not understand what grace is all about, yes. you know. And uh, they didn't understand that grace is not a license or sin. For a, grace, grace is not a license for us to deliberately sin. Not at all. You know, God, the Bible says, God forbid that that be it. But, you know, grace does cover us if we, we slip and make mistakes, you know, and all that we can go to God and say, God forgive me, and God's grace covers us. Now, if you have somebody who's a habitual sinner, 
and it's just out there, I mean, you know, every day of their life, you know, and we, unfortunately, there is people who, who do this, you know, they'll live their life every day, nothing's changed, they haven't been transformed in their mind, right. you know, but they simply uh, was told that they were saved because they may have repeated a prayer or something, but nothing in their life changed, nothing in their life changed at all, they were still out there doing the same wicked things they did before, but they would say, oh, God's grace has got me covered. God's grace has gotten me covered. That's not the way God's grace works. It's not for us to deliberately go out there and live a life of sin, and then we claim God's grace. Amen? Because the transformation has not taken place. That must take place. You know, God's grace is to cover us in the times when we accidentally, you know, we slip up and we make mistakes because he knows we're not perfect. And that's why we have God's grace, because we're not perfect. If we was perfect, we wouldn't need God's grace. That's right. Now, would we? No. So God's grace covers us because we're not perfect, you know, and we'll never be perfect. I don't care how much you strive, how much you strive every day, you'll never be perfect, mm -hmm. you know. And even as this world gets more wickeder and the longer you stay on this, this world, you know, because the Bible says that God will shorten the days for even the very less days. Right. Now, this world is going to get so wicked, it's going to get so bad, that it's going to be even hard for the Christian people to maintain, you know, their relationship. You know, so God might have to shorten the day that even the very elect, you know, will not be deceived. Right. You know, do not deceive. So with all the false teaching and all the things that's happening in the world today, so you'll never be perfect. You're not going to achieve that, you know. But that doesn't mean that you don't need to continue to strive to be Christ-like every day. That's not a license for us to go and to live our life in any old way and say, well, I can't be perfect, so why should I even try? Well, God's not asking you to be perfect. He's not even asking you to try to be perfect. He's just asking you to be obedient to Him. Exactly. Asking you to read His Word, to study His Word, to have a relationship with Him, you know, and then He will teach you. He will guide you. He will direct your path, right. you know. But you don't try to strive for perfection, you know, because you're not going to achieve it. And if you do, then you're going to be a most miserable person in your walk with God. But again, I'm not, I'm not giving you a license to say that you can just go out and do anything you know, because you can't be perfect. You know, you should strive every day. And the closer you get to God, you know, then the more Christ-like you're going to be. Sister Peggy has, teaching and, uh, has been teaching for the last few weeks on the uh, fruits of the Spirit, you know. And, and I've always said to myself, and, and some may differ and may call it a different thing, but I always look at the fruits of the Spirit being the, the attribute to God, you know, being His personality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because when, 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 when God said... Let us make man in our own image, you know. He wasn't talking about a physical being, you know what I'm saying? Because if he did, would he look like you, Peggy? Would he look like me, Heather? Would God look like you, Dwayne? Would God look like you? He wasn't talking about a physical being, you know what I'm saying? So he was talking about a spiritual thing. So when he made it in his image, you know, that was his characteristic, his spirit. So when we talk about the, the, the fruits of the spirit, you know, all those things is who, who God is, who Jesus Christ is. And those are the things that we should be doing to be Christ-like. Yes. Amen? To be more Christ-like. And when we begin to have those things operating in our life, the fruits of the Spirit, you know, then we can be more Christ-like and we can be more victorious over the things in life that comes our way. Because why? Because we're striving to be more like Christ. Not that we're trying to achieve to be like Christ, because we'll never do that. We'll never do that. Now, that's not even the goal you should try to be, like Christ. You should be Christ's life, you know, through his spirit, through his attributes, through his personality, you know. Of, and, and the best way I can explain it is through the fruits of the spirit. That's how I look at it. And I, 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 I'm not kind of getting off track here, but I'm going to say this. Uh, I, I don't believe you can have the, uh, the gifts of the spirit until you have the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's another sermon for another day. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, uh, now I do think the church needs the gifts of the Spirit mm -hmm. operating. I actually, I do believe, you know, the first church had it, the early church had it, you know, and I think that, that, we, that we do need to have not only the fruits, the fruits of the Spirit should be operating in everybody's life, every single Christian's life. Mm -hmm. The fruits of the Spirit should just be in every Christian's life. But the gifts of the Spirit is a totally different thing, okay? Right. But it does need to operate in the church today for the church to be the fulfillment of what the church is supposed to be because that's what the church was in the early church. Amen? So anyhow, mm -hmm. but maybe you want to look that up or study that or something other with the gifts of the Spirit and, and, and all. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to throw that in there free. That's cost you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow. Uh, but anyhow, so, talking about victory. 
Uh, how many want to be victorious? Yes. Amen. And everything you do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> says here, uh, God tells me that when I live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, life is hard. I can take, I can t I can take God back there to heal me, to forgive me, to forgive my sin. But God, but God, but but does, but God not, but God does not say. My goodness. <laughs> I finally got that out. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard, but I was determined to go to Anyhow, God does not say, okay, my name is I was, but God says my name is I am. I am. You find that in Exodus 3 and 14. I am. So God's not saying I was. God is today. He's still saying I am for everything, everything in our life. You know, he's still saying I am. I am your deliverer. I am your healer. You know, I am your refuge. I'm everything you have need of. Yes. And God is still saying that today. He said, I am. So when we talk about living in victory, you know, God is saying to you, I still am the one who can help you to walk and to live in victory. Yes. Again, we can't do it in ourselves. We've got to have God. When I try to live in the future with its unknown problems and fear, life is hard. I know God will be with me when that day comes, but God does not say, my name is I will be. We say, I will be. What is his name? Uh -oh, I am. I am. Yeah. I am. Present, future, the past, present, future. He yeah. still I am. Still I am. When I live in today, which is the present, this moment, one day at a time, life is not, life is not hard. God says, I am here. Come to me, all of you, and this is Matthew 11 and 28, says, come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. He's the God of I am. I am. The same God that was the God of, in, in the Old Testament, is the same God of God that he's the God of I am. And it's, it's, it's good for us to kind of remind ourselves of that, uh, because there's many times in life today that we need to reflect back on when God says, I am. You know, and that's what he told Moses, is all you got to tell them, you don't tell them nothing else. You just say, tell them, I am this. I am thinking. <laughs> I am. So, Today, when we, when, when we go through our struggles and our trials, always remember the I am Amen. is there with you. Amen? Once you ask God to remove all of our character defects, we begin a journey that will lead us to new freedom from our past. Don't look for perfection, as I mentioned earlier. Instead, rejoice in your steady progress. In your steady progress. Rejoice in your steady progress. You know, look where you was at one time and where you are today. Amen? It's always good to look back, you know, and say, God, look where I was and look where I am now. But God, where do you want to take me from here? Yeah. Don't ever become complacent. Don't ever become satisfied. You know, always strive, you know, for more of God. And uh, God's desire is to, to use us in a mighty way. Amen? Yeah. Uh, it, God never intended for us to get saved and to sit on the street. <laughs> he never intends for us to get saved and just be satisfied with our relationship at that point. He, he wants us to get saved and to become a disciple of his. Amen? Uh -huh. To reach out. And that again, that's why we must learn to walk in victory, to be able to be the true disciple and you know that God wants us to be. To be able to reflect you know, the characteristics that's in Christ should live in us, that we can reflect those characteristics to others. Amen? Yes. So you give people something that they can you know, look forward to. Some yeah. people are people are looking for something. People are wanting hope. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're wanting hope. I mean, this is. I, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, you know, we're always we're always looking for just a gleam of hope. Right. Amen. You know, a gleam of hope. And there are people out there in the world today who seem like they have no hope. They have no hope. And the reason they feel like they have no hope is because they really haven't found a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, there may be times, even as Christians, you know, you may doubt. You know, you may get down. You may get discouraged, okay? You know, that, that happens, you know. Uh, but you don't stay there. You know what I'm saying? You don't stay there. You don't let the devil just take and rob all your victory away from you. You right. shake it off, you know. It's okay for a moment to pout. It's okay for a moment to feel sorry for yourself. You know, it's okay for a moment, you know, to go through those emotional things that we go through. We all do it. We all do it. It doesn't mean that you're any less Christian. Than you were before those moments took place. 
It just means you're going through a rough time. You get through it and you shake it off. You say, Satan, get me behind me. And you press towards the, 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 the mark of the prize of the high call. And you push forward and you shake it off and you begin to walk again in victory. Okay? So, uh, you know, if we stumble and fall, you know, don't 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 just sit there and water it. You know, don't let the devil beat you over the head with it. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, yeah, you're supposed to be such a great Christian, you know. Uh, you do this and you do that. But look at you right now. You got here in the mully grubs, you know. Uh, you know, and he'll try to use that. He'll try to use that for you, against you. So, you know, you just shake yourself off. You say, God, you know, I'm serving you. You're the great I am. Lord, I may be going through a, a valley right now. But, God, I know after that valley is going to be a mountaintop. When you get on that mountaintop, you just stand up there and you praise God. You thank Him for the victory. You look the devil in the eye and say, hey, hey, hey. You laugh at him and you say, look at you now, Satan. <laughs> you know, and you walk in victory. All right. Uh, in Philippians 1 and 6, it says, uh, And I am sure that God will begin a good work within you, will keep right on helping you grow in His grace until His task begin you, it's finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. God is constantly working on us. He's constantly working on us to, 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 to work within us to help perfect us into what he wants us to be. <clears throat> because as, as, long as, you, as long as you place self-reliance first, a true reliance on Jesus Christ is impossible. You must voluntarily submit. Again, we must voluntarily submit to every change God wants us to make in our life and humbly ask him to remove all the shortcomings. God is waiting to turn weakness into strength. God is waiting to turn weakness into strength. And all we need to do is just humbly ask him. You know, Lord, take my imperfections. Take my imperfections, Lord, away and help me to overcome and to be stronger that we may be able to live in victory. James 4, 6 through 8, and I'm going to close with this. Does God give strength to the humble? So give yourself humbly to God. God gives strength. To the humble, to the humble. God gives strength to the humble. So give yourself humbly to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And when you when you draw nigh to God, God will draw close to you or draw nigh to you. This is a different translation than King James. <laughs> and yeah, so, uh, so first of all, is God gives strength to the humble. We must stay humble. Amen. We've got to stay humble. And, uh, and that's hard to do all the time, you know, but we got to strive to be more humble and more humble, you know, to be more Christ-like. So we got to be humble. we got to give uh, our, our, so we give ourselves humbly to God. We resist the devil who will flee from you, and when you draw close to God or draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh into you. Yes. So, uh, we're talking about living victory tonight, and, uh, and I know we all want to be living victory, but uh, we got to learn to submit ourselves to God, to stay humble, to trust the Lord, to know that he's there with us in the times of our weakness and to continue to push on and push forward every day. If you make a mistake, you fall down, you get up, you shake yourself off, you say, thank you, Lord, for helping me, you know, and you continue to march on. And I know there's probably some in here tonight that you probably experienced that. You know, you probably got down in the mullet road. Uh, I know with people in the ministry, you know, sometimes it's not easy. <laughs> you know, I've been there and experienced it. I'm sure Sister Heather has, has done it many times, too. You know, that we're in sister, but we're, uh, you know, uh, you just really had to trust the Lord, you know, and it doesn't mean you're any less Christian, it doesn't mean that God wasn't still working on you, wasn't still with you, wasn't still, you know, providing for you, it just means you had to reach out there and grab a little bit more faith, right. <laughs> grab a, a lot of more faith sometimes, you know, a lot more faith, so anyhow, Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this tonight, Father, Lord, we thank you for each one that's here, uh, Father, we thank you for victory. Lord, we thank you for the assurance that we can have victory. That, Father, we just stay close to you, Lord. Humble ourselves, Father. Lord, trust you, God. And, Lord, uh, just call upon you, Father, Lord, and, God, that we can walk in the victory that you uh, had intended for each and every one of us to walk in. Father, we want to thank you for that assurance tonight, Lord. We just give you praise and glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs>